Growing up in late 19th and early 20th century Germany, the Jewish philosopher Franz Rosenzweig was surrounded by Christian culture. It was unavoidable. So much so that a lot of middle class, nominally observant Jewish families, like the one that Rosenzweig grew up in, were considering converting to Christianity. They just didn't think that Judaism held much meaning for them. And if society saw them as Christian, they were much more likely to get ahead. They wouldn't be so discriminated against. There would be more room for them to improve their lot in life. They could join the most popular clubs. Some of Rosenzweig's cousins and even some academic colleagues had converted to Christianity. And in the summer of 1913, they were encouraging him to do the same. Rosenzweig told them that he would consider conversion, but first he needed to dig into Judaism to make sure he understood what he was giving up. Beginning with the new Jewish year, Rosenzweig devoted himself to the process of the Yamim Noraim, the days of awe. And as legend goes, he was so moved by the experience, especially by the Kol Nidre service, that he never considered leaving Judaism for the rest of his life. From the Jewish year 5674, Franz Rosenzweig devoted his life to Jewish education and Jewish thought, studying and writing extensively on both subjects. He committed himself to recovering Judaism for his own life and for others like him. He even founded a modern study house devoted to adult education and Jewish learning and practice, which still exists to this day. I wish I knew what was said or what happened at those high holiday services to make Rosenzweig a believer, not again, but for the first time in his life. And I think every rabbi, cantor, and Jewish educator who has ever heard this story has wanted the exact same thing. How could we take the lessons from those transformative high holidays from Berlin 1913 and use them as a model to ensure that we, what we do every year is as meaningful and worthwhile. And of course, Rosenzweig's story is just so perfect for this time of year, not only because it all took place during the high holidays, but because his life-changing experience embodies the values and the lessons of the high holidays especially that of teshuva. We often translate teshuva as repentance, or in the case of Yom Kippur, as atonement. However, teshuva can be so much more than that. The root of teshuva is, is shuv, it means turning. So we often use teshuva to also talk about returning. For Rosenzweig, it was returning to the roots of his family, of traditions and beliefs. He explored Judaism, analyzing it, studying it, and ultimately allowed Judaism to transform his own life. And he committed himself to finding ways to do the same for others. Ultimately, that's the hope of teshuva, that it's a transformative experience, and especially in the case of repenting. But even so, with returning, the hope is that it will lead us to make a positive change in our lives and the lives of others in this new year to come. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of communal divisiveness, in the midst of social isolation and terrible loss, we asked ourselves, how could we offer a worthwhile way to help make meaning out of this new year? How could we help people perhaps change for the better? What could we offer our community to bring purpose to our lives through the lens of Judaism? And we came up with Shalom University a way to find strength, insight, and joy in all that Judaism has to offer. This year, we are returning to all that Judaism has to offer. And like going off to college, turning to Judaism is an immersive experience. So we identified four aspects of Judaism and tied them to four major categories in university life. In order to walk out of this year with a certificate of achievement, a degree in Jewish life, one must touch on all four categories of a holistic Jewish experience. First, of course, for university life, it's education, learning about our Jewish traditions and teachings. Next is one's spiritual and emotional health, as in participating in services. Then there's community service, giving back to one's community, a large part of the college experience, just as 
as it is a huge element in our Jewish understanding of living a just life. And finally, there are the extracurriculars, that is, being and participating in Jewish community. Each of these elements is key to embracing and celebrating a complete Jewish life. Moreover, I believe that these categories ultimately offer a path to returning to wholeness, or shalom. So let's break down our categories for the year and see how to find that inner purpose and peace. To return to our example of Franz Rosenzweig, in order to engage with something, in order to make it your own, and to be able to share it with others, you have to study it. There's no getting around a little learning in Shalom University. The hope, though, is that we have so many ways for you to learn and explore Judaism that it won't feel like a task or a burden. In her book, Here All Along, Finding Meaning, Spirituality, and a Deeper Connection to Life in Judaism, after finally choosing to look there, Sarah Hurwitz writes about her family's growing distance from Judaism. After she and her siblings became B'nai Mitzvah, the family, which had rarely gone to services or attended many programs, simply drifted away from their synagogue. Like Rosenzweig's childhood experiences, it didn't seem that Judaism had much depth or wisdom to offer. And her Horowitz and her parents only knew what could be digested in quick bites, at a sermon or two, at a short child program. It wasn't until Horowitz was an adult, a lawyer, and an accomplished speechwriter that she found herself wandering back to Judaism. Just in order to fill time on Wednesday evenings, she decided to take an introduction to Judaism course at her local JCC. What I discovered there in that class utterly floored me, Hurwitz writes. I had always thought of myself as a good person, but the Jewish ethics we studied set a much higher bar for honesty, generosity, and basic human decency than I had ever thought to set for myself. Once I actually understood the purposes of the holidays and life cycle rituals, they struck me as beautiful and profound, honoring the lessons of the past, sanctifying moments in the present, conveying deep moral wisdom. Seen through adult eyes, she continued, this wasn't the stale, rote Judaism of my childhood. It was something relevant, endlessly fascinating, and alive. I know that if you engage in this teshuva, if you turn to Jewish texts and traditions, if you turn to learning deeply about Judaism, you too will find something relevant, endlessly fascinating, and alive. This year, we hope every person or family walks away from Shalom University with at least a Bachelor's of Aleph or a family appreciation. And we hope that there is at least one, if not many, pathways into learning that appeal to you in order to do so whether through family camps, at the religious school, our adult education courses, through the adult music experience lectures, or perhaps our weekly Torah study at Shabbat edition, there are so many ways to study and learn about your Judaism. All you have to do, like Hurwitz and Rosenzweig, is choose to return to it. And while we're returning, can I interest you in turning to prayer? Services are a key component to Shalom University. At Shabbat and holiday services, we have the opportunity to engage with something greater than ourselves, to reach out to the divine and to communicate not only with God, but also with ourselves. The key word of our prayer service, indeed the key word of so much of our identity as Jews is Shema, our command to listen. Rabbi Adina Allen explains that just that one word alone is a powerful call Listening is not an easy thing to do. More than the simple act of hearing, true listening requires us to open ourselves up to another's experience so that heart touches heart and we are changed. Opportunities for prayer open us up to the possibility to truly listen to what our souls are telling us, as well as to begin to listen to that still, small voice within us and all around us. Engaging in prayer should leave us, our relationship to ourselves, our relationship to our communities and our families, our relationship to God even, transformed. And our lives and the day-to-day -day demands of our time and focus are growing ever more complicated. This past year left us with so much to reflect on. And I think it is fair to say that there will be much more to consider in 5781. 
Turning to prayer gives us the time and space to listen in the hopes that listening can lead to real change and growth, the true mark of teshuva. Return to prayer as a part of your practice in Shalom University, and the hope is that this will be an integral step in finding a sense of shalom. Our university system would be incomplete without considering town and gown relations, as they say, and turning to the world around us, and so too with Judaism. Throughout the Bible and the Torah, the prophets, the Psalms, and other writings, we are urged to live an upright and just life. It means we have a responsibility to ourselves, to our families, and our surrounding communities to create as righteous and just a society as possible. Tomorrow morning in our Haftorah reading, we will hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah watches the people's preparations for the Day of Atonement, and God asks, is this the fast I desire? A day for people to starve their bodies? Is it bowing the head like a bulrush and lying in sackcloth and ashes? And the prophet continues, and then explains how to create a more just society, and indeed what must be included not just on the Day of Atonement, but all days. No, this is the fast I desire, to unlock the fetters of wickedness and untie the cords of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free. It is to share your bread with the hungry and to take the wretched poor into your home. When you see the naked, to clothe him and do not ignore your own kin. The lesson of this exhortation is that our prayer, our fasting, our repentance is incomplete unless we make sure to care for the most vulnerable in our midst. And the thing is, there's teshuva in this too. We need to turn outward to see the needs of our community. We need to turn towards the hurt and pain in our own SHM family, our just society, our more peaceful, more meaningful world that we're trying to create with Shalom University, asks that we make a commitment to caring for the world around us. And so you may want to do your part by joining Chesed, our caring committee, so you can make meals for grieving families or send cards to going, going to someone through a difficult time. Other people may want to join our Tikkun Olam committee called Shemesh, and commit to healing the world on a more far-reaching scale by participating in a Sharing Healthy Meals program to fight food insecurity, to help students learn to love books and words with reading partners. Perhaps you want to you help families living in our own Orange County living on the edge with our Jessica Heron caring and sharing drives throughout the year. There are numerous ways to fulfill our obligation to protect and nurture our community. And so we turn to these opportunities in the hopes of creating more wholeness out in the world. And so, too, to create more wholeness inside ourselves. Lastly, for a university experience to be holistic and immersive, there has to be extracurriculars. There has to be community involvement. And so we hope that you join a Chavara this year if you don't already belong to one. Or maybe you want to invest in more quality time with the one you belong to now. Maybe you want to pledge our Nashim sorority or the Brotherhood fraternity. You can sing in the equivalent of a college glee club with our choirs, both virtually and hopefully someday soon in person. There are so many ways to be a part of this community, to get the full Shalom University experience. And in many ways, I believe this is the most important part of any of our degrees this year. I love learning. I love classes and education. I'm a rabbi. Rabbi means my teacher. So I'd love to tell you that the courses in Shalom University are the most important part. But I know that that's not true. I know that the most important part of Judaism is living in community with one another. Like Franz Rosenzweig and Sarah Hurwitz, I also didn't grow up in an observant Jewish family. My Jewish relatives had a passing connection to Judaism at most. Our Judaism was about gathering together for holiday meals, an appreciation for Seinfeld, and a love of good bagels and deli. I didn't even learn to read Hebrew until I was in middle school, when my immediate family finally made the decision to actually join a synagogue. 
we joined like so many families do because I wanted a bat mitzvah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yet our reasons for joining the synagogue didn't matter nearly as much as what has kept my family and me tied to Judaism ever since. And that is the people we met, the relationships we developed, the transformative power of being in Jewish community. For us, community was our true teshuva, our turning to something greater than our own little family unit. And there we discovered life-changing possibilities. Judaism is meant to be experienced in the plural. Al tifrosh min hatzibor, we read in Perkei Avot, do not separate yourself from the community. In Judaism, we study in Hevruta in pairs because our minds are both stronger and sharper and also more considerate and nuanced when working together. In prayer, when we rise for the Amidah, we pray to the God of our ancestors. When we conclude our services, we say the Aleinu, stating that it is our responsibility to bring wholeness to the world. And we gather together a minion, a group of at least 10 Jewish adults, to ensure that we can properly mourn our loved ones. This year, I want to urge you to not just turn to your faith and traditions, but turn to ours. Turn not just to your own spirituality, but to all of ours. Turn to our whole community. Support us, lift us up, care for us, and we will do the same for you. My family was surrounded by our Jewish community, sheltered with friendship, compassion, and care. And so I have devoted my life to doing the same for others. In his book on Jewish learning, Rosenzweig wrote of a new kind of learning. One that begins from our own lives and goes back to Torah and returns from our lives to Judaism. He writes, from the periphery back to the center, from the outside in. Whether you feel you are sitting on the periphery or are already at the center, there is room for you here to bring yourself to Torah and Judaism, to bring yourself to Shalom University this year. There you will find transformative, life-affirming, and meaningful experiences. Turn towards us, and we welcome you in for a year of shalom.